This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Ulysses by James Joyce. Chapter 13, Part 3. Recorded by Bob Foster. Montreal, March 2006. Canon O'Hanlon put the Blessed Sacrament back into the tabernacle, and the choir sang Laudate Dominum Omnes Gentes, and then he locked the tabernacle door because the benediction was over, and Father Conroy handed him his hat to put on, and Cross Cat Edie asked, wasn't she coming, but Jackie Caffrey called out, Oh, look, sissy! And they all looked, was it sheet lightning, but Tommy saw it too over the trees beside the church, blue and then green and purple. It's fireworks, Sissy Caffrey said. And they all ran down the strand to see over the houses and the church, helter-skelter, Edie with the pushcar with baby boardman in it, and Sissy holding Tommy and Jackie by the hand so they wouldn't fall running. Come on, Gertie, Sissy called. It's the bazaar fireworks. But Gertie was adamant. She had no intention of being at their beck and call. If they could run like Rosie's, she could sit so she said she could see from where she was. The eyes that were fastened upon her set her pulses tingling. She looked at him a moment, meeting his glance, and a late broke in upon her. White-hot passion was in that face, passion silent as the grave, and it had made her his. At last they were left alone without the others to pry and pass remarks, and she knew he could be trusted to the death steadfast, a sterling man, a man of inflexible honour to his fingertips. His hands and face were working, and a tremor went over her. She leaned back far to look up where the fireworks were, and she caught her knee in her hand, so as not to fall back looking up, and there was no one to see only him and her, when she revealed all her graceful, beautifully shaped legs, like that, supply soft, and delicately rounded, and she seemed to hear the panting of his heart, his hoarse breathing, because she knew about the passion of men like that, hot-blooded, because Bertha Supple told her once in dead secret and made her swear she'd never, about the gentle, gentleman lodger that was staying with them out of the congested district's board, that had pictures cut out of papers of those skirt dancers and high kickers, and she said, he used to do something not very nice that you could imagine sometimes in the bed, but this was altogether different from a thing like that, because there was all the difference, because she could almost feel him draw her face to his, and the first quick hot touch of his handsome lips. Besides, there was absolution so long as you didn't do the other thing before being married, and there ought to be women priests that would understand without your telling out, and Sissy Caffrey, too, sometimes had that dreamy kind of dreamy look in her eyes, so that she, too, my dear, and Winnie Rippingham, so mad about actress photographs, and besides it was on account of that other thing coming on the way it did. And Jackie Caffrey shouted to look, there was another, and she leaned back, and the garters were blue to match on account of the transparent, and they all saw it and shouted to look. Look, there it was, and she leaned back ever so far to see the fireworks, and something queer was flying about through the air, a soft thing to and fro, dark. And she saw a long Roman candle going up over the trees, up, up, and in the tense hush they were all breathless with excitement as it went higher and higher, and she had to lean back more and more to look up after it, high, high, almost out of sight, and her face was suffused with a divine and entrancing blush from straining back, and he could see her other things, too, neensook knickers, the fabric that caresses the skin, better than those other petty width, the green, four and eleven, on account of being white, and she let him, and she saw that he saw, and then it went so high it went out of sight a moment, and she was trembling in every limb from being bent so far back he had a full view high up above her knee, no one ever, not even on the swing or waiting, and she wasn't ashamed, and he wasn't either to look in that immodest way like that, because he couldn't resist the sight of the wondrous revealment half-offered 
like those skirt dancers behaving so immodest before gentlemen looking and she kept on looking looking she would fain have cried to him chokingly held out her snowy slender arms to him to come to feel his lips laid on her white brow the cry of a young girl's love a little strangled cry wrung from her that cry that has rung through the ages and then a rocket sprang and bang shot blind and oh then the roman candle burst and it was like a, a sigh of oh and every one cried oh oh in raptures and it gushed out of it a stream of rain gold hair threads and they shed and ah they were all greeny dewy stars falling with golden oh so lively oh so soft sweet soft then all melted away dually in the grey air all was silent ah she glanced at him as she bent forward quickly a pathetic little glance of piteous protest of shy reproach under which he coloured like a girl he was leaning back against a rock behind leopold bloom for it is he stands silent with bowed head before those young guileless eyes what a brute he had been at it again a fair unsullied soul had called to him and wretch that he was how had he answered an utter cad he had been he of all men but there was an infinite store of mercy in those eyes for him too a word of pardon even though he had erred and sinned and wandered should a girl tell no a thousand times no that was their secret only theirs alone in the hiding twilight and there was none to know or tell save the little bat that flew so softly through the evening to and fro and little bats don't tell Sissy Caffrey whistled, imitating the boys in the football field to show what a great person she was, and then she cried, Gertie! Gertie! We're going! Come on! We can see from farther up! Gertie had an idea, one of love's little ruses. She slipped a hand into her kerchief park pocket and took out the wadding and waved in reply, of course, without letting him, and then slipped it back wonder if he's too far too she rose was it good-bye no she had to go but they would meet again there and she would dream of that till then to-morrow of her dream of yester eve she drew herself up to her full height their souls met in a last lingering glance and the eyes that reached her heart full of a strange shining hung enraptured on her sweet flower-like face she half smiled at him wanly a sweet forgiving smile a smile that verged on tears and then they parted slowly without looking back she went down the uneven strand to sissy to edie to jackie and tommy caffrey the little baby boardman it was darker now and there were stones and bits of wood on the strand and slippy seaweed she walked with a certain quiet dignity characteristic of her but with care and very slowly because gertie mcdowell was tight boots no she's lame oh mr bloom watched her as she limped away poor girl that's why she's left on the shelf and the others did a sprint thought something was wrong by the cut of her jib jilted beauty a defect is ten times worse in a woman, but makes them polite. Glad I didn't know it when she was on show. Hot little devil all the same. Wouldn't mind. Curiosity like a nun or a negress, or a girl with glasses. That squinty one is delicate. Near her monthlies, I expect, makes them feel ticklish. I have such a bad headache today. Where did I put the letter? Yes, all right. All kinds of crazy longings, licking pennies. Girl in Tranquilla convent that nun told me liked to smell rock oil. Virgins go mad in the end, I suppose. Sister, how many women in Dublin have it today? Martha, she, something in the air. That's the moon. But then why don't all women menstruate at the same time with the same moon, I mean? Depends on the time they were born, I suppose, or all start scratch, then get out of step. Something's Molly and Millie together. Anyhow, I got the best of that. 
Damn glad I didn't do it in the bath this morning over her silly I will punish you letter. Made up for that tram driver this morning. That gouger McCoy stopped me to say nothing and his wife engagement in the country valise. Voice like a pickaxe. Thankful for small mercies. Cheap, too. Yours for the asking. Because they want it themselves. Their natural craving. Shoals of them every evening poured out of offices. Reserve better. Don't want it, they throw it at you. Catch them alive. Oh, pity they can't see themselves. A dream of well-filled hose. Where was that? Ah, yes. Mutoscope pictures in Capel Street. For men only. Peeping Tom. Woolly's hat and what the girls did with it. Do they snapshot those girls, or is it all a fake? Lingerie does it. Felt for the curves inside her déshabillé. Excites them also when they're... I'm all clean, come and dirty me. And they like dressing one another for the sacrifice. Milly delighted with Molly's new blouse. At first, put them all on to take them all off. Molly, why, I bought her the violet garters. Us, too. The tie he wore, his lovely socks and turned-up trousers. He wore a pair of gaiters the night that first we met. His lovely shirt was shining beneath his what? Of jet. Say a woman loses a dream with every pin she takes out. Pinned together. Oh, Mary lost a pin of her. Dressed up to the nines for somebody. Fashion part of their charm. Just changes when you're on the track of the secret. Except the East. Mary, Martha, now as then. No reasonable offer refused. She wasn't in a hurry, either. Always off to a fellow when they are. They never forget an appointment. Out on spec, probably. They believe in chance, because, like themselves, and the others inclined to give her an odd dig. Girlfriends at school, arms around each other's necks and with ten fingers locked, kissing and whispering secrets about nothing in the convent garden. Nuns with whitewashed faces, cool quaff and their rosaries going up and down, vindictive, too, for what they can't get. Barbed wire. Be sure now and write me. And I'll write to you. Now, won't you? Molly and Josie pal. Till Mr. Wright comes along, then meet once in a blue moon. Tableau. Oh, look, who it is, for the love of God. How are you at all? What have you been doing with yourself? Kiss and delighted, too. Kiss to see you. Picking holes in each other's appearance. You're looking splendid. Sister souls showing their teeth at one another. How many have you left? Wouldn't lend each other a pinch of salt. Ah! Devils they are when that's coming on them. Dark devilish appearance. Molly often told me things a ton weight. Molly often told me feel things a ton weight. Scratch the sole of my foot. Oh, that way. Oh, that's exquisite. Feel it myself, too. Good to rest once in a while. Wonder if it's bad to go with them, then. Safe in one way. Turns milk. Makes fiddle strings snap. Something about withering plants I read in a garden. Besides, they say if the flower withers, she wears. She's a flirt. All are. Dare say she felt I. When you feel like that, you often meet what you feel. Liked me or what? Dress they look at. Always know a fellow courting collars and come. Well, cocks and lions do the same and stags. Same time might prefer a tie undone or something. Trousers? Suppose I when I was? No. Gently does it. Dislike rough and tumble. Kiss in the dark and never tell. Saw something in me. Wonder what? Sooner have me as I am than some poet chap with bear's grease, plastery hair, love lock over his dexter optic, to aid gentlemen in literary. Ought to attend to my appearance, my age. Didn't let her see me in profile. Still, you never know. Pretty girls and ugly men marrying. Beauty and the beast. Besides, I can't be so if Molly took off her hat to show her hair. Wide brim bought to hide her face, meeting someone might know her, bend down or carry a bunch of flowers to smell, hair strong and rut. Tin bob I got for Molly's combings when we were on the rocks in Hollis Street. Why not? Suppose he gave her money. Why not? All a prejudice. She's worth ten, fifteen, more a pound. All that for nothing. Bold hand. 
Mrs. Marion. Did I forget to write address on that letter like the postcard I sent to Flynn? And the day I went to Drimmy's without a necktie. Wrangle with Molly it was. Put me off. No, I remember. Richie Golding. He's another. Weighs on his mind. Funny my watch stopped at half past four. Dust. Shark liver oil they used to clean. Could do it myself. Save. Was that just when he... She... Oh, he did. Into her. She did. Done. Ah... Mr. Bloom, with careful hand, recomposed his wet shirt. Oh, Lord, that little limping devil begins to feel cold and clammy. After effect, not pleasant. Still, you have to get rid of it some way. They don't care. Complimented, perhaps. Go home to nicey bread and milky and say night, nighty prayers with the kitties. Well, aren't they? See her as she is, spoil all. Must have the stage setting, the rouge, costume, position, music. The name, too, Amour of Actresses. Nell Gwynn, Mrs. Bracegirdle, Maud Branscombe. Curtain up, moonlight silver effulgence. Maiden discovered with pensive bosom. Little sweetheart, come and kiss me. Still, I feel, the strength it gives a man. That's the secret of it. Good job I let off there behind, coming out of Dignam's. Cider, that was. Otherwise, I couldn't have. Makes you want to sing after. La course est tartare. Suppose I spoke to her. What about? Bad plan, however, if you don't know how to end the conversation. Ask them a question, they ask you another. Good idea if you're in a cart. Wonderful, of course, if you say, Good evening, and you see she's on for it. Good evening. Oh, but the dark evening in the Appian way, I nearly spoke to Mrs. Clinch, oh, thinking she was. Phew! Girl in Meath Street that night. All the dirty things I made her say, all wrong, of course. My arcs, she called it. It's so hard to find one who... Oh, ho! If you don't answer, when they solicit, must be horrible for them till they harden. And kissed my hand when I gave her the extra two shillings. Parrots. Press the button and the bird will speak. Squeak. Wished she hadn't called me, sir. Oh, her mouth in the dark. And you a married man with a single girl. That's what they enjoy, taking a man from another woman, or even hear of it. Different with me, glad to get away from other chap's wife, eating off his cold plate. Chap in the Burton today, spitting back gum chewed gristle. French letter still in my pocket-book, cause of half the trouble. But might happen some time, I don't think. Come in, all is prepared. I dreamt. What? Worst is beginning. How they change the venue when it's not what they like. Ask you to do like mushrooms because she once knew a gentleman who... Or ask you what someone was going to say when he changed his mind and stopped. Yet if I went the whole hog, say, I want to, something like that. Because I did, she too, offend her. Then make it up. <clears throat> Pretend to want something awfully, then cry off for her sake. Flatters them. She must have been thinking of someone else all the time. What harm? Must since she came to the use of reason. He, he, and he. First kiss does the trick. The propitious moment. Something inside them goes pop. Mushy-like. Tell by their eye on the sly. First thoughts are best. Remember that till their dying day. Molly, Lieutenant Mulvey, that kissed her under the Moorish wall beside the gardens. Fifteen, she told me. But her breasts were developed. Fell asleep then. After Jinkree dinner, that was when we drove home the Featherbed Mountain, gnashing her teeth in sleep. Lord Mayor had his eye on her, too. Val Dillon, apoplectic. There she is with them down there for the fireworks, my fireworks, up like a rocket, down like a stick. And the children, twins, they must be waiting for something to happen, want to be grown-ups, dressing, <clears throat> dressing in mother's clothes, time enough, understand all the ways of the world. And the dark one with the mop head and the nigger mouth. I knew she could whistle. Mouth made for that. Like Molly. Why, that high-class whore in jammets wore her veil only to her nose. Would you mind, please, telling me the right time? I'll tell you the right time up a dark lane. Say prunes and prisms forty times every morning. Cure for fat lips. 
caressing the little boy too. Onlookers see most of the game. Of course they understand birds, animals, babies, in their line. Didn't look back when she was going down the strand. Wouldn't give that satisfaction. Those girls, those girls, those lovely seaside girls. Fine eyes she had, clear. It's the white of the eye brings that out, not so much the pupil. Did she know what I... Course like a cat sitting beyond a dog's jump. Women never meet one like that Wilkins in the high school drawing a picture of Venus with all his belongings on show. Call that innocence? Poor idiot. His wife has her work cut out for her. Never see them sit on a bench marked wet paint. Eyes all over them. Look under the bed for what's not there. Longing to get the fright of their lives. Sharp as needles they are. When I said to Molly the man at the corner of Cuff Street was good-looking, thought she might like twigged at once he had a false arm had to where do they get that typist going up roger green's stairs two at a time to show her understandings handed down from father to mother to daughter i mean bread and the bone milly for example drawing her handkerchief on the mirror to save the ironing best place for an ad to catch a woman's eye on a mirror and when i sent her for molly's paisley shawl to prescott's by the way, that ad I must, carrying home the change in her stocking. Clever little minx. I never told her. Neat way she carried parcels, too. Attract men, small thing like that. Holding up her hand, shaking it, to let the blood flow back when it was red. Who did you learn that from? Nobody. Something the nurse taught me. Oh, don't they know? Three years old she was in front of Molly's dressing table, just before we left Lombard Street West. Me have a nice face, Mullingar, who knows? Ways of the world, young student, straight on her pins anyway, not like the other. Still she was game, Lord, I am wet. Devil you are, a swell of her calf, transparent stockings stretched to breaking point, not like that frump today. A. E. rumpled stockings, or the one in Grafton Street, white, wow, beef to the heel. A monkey puzzle rocket burst, spluttering and darting crackles. Zrads and zrads, zrads, zrads. And Sissy and Tommy ran out to sea, and Edie after with the pushcar, and then Gertie beyond the curve of the rocks. Will she? Watch, watch. See? Looked round. She smelt an onion. Darling, I saw your... I saw all. Lord! Did me good all the same. Off color after Kiernan's dignums. For this relief, much thanks. In Hamlet, that is, Lord, it was all things combined. Excitement. When she leaned back, felt an ache at the butt of my tongue. Your head, it simply swirls. He's right. Might have made a worse fool of myself, however. Instead of talking about nothing, then I will tell you all. Still, it was a kind of language between us. It couldn't be? No, Gertie they called her. Might be false name, however, like my and the address Dolphin's Barn a Blind. Her maiden name was Jemima Brown, and she lived with her mother in Irish town. Place made me think of that, I suppose, all tarred with the same brush, wiping pens in their stockings. But the ball rolled down to her as if it understood. Every bullet has its billet. Of course I never could throw anything straight at school, crooked as a ram's horn. Sad, however, because it lasts only a few years till they settle down to pot walloping, and Papa's pants will soon fit Willie, and Fuller's earth for the baby when they hold him out to do ah-ah. No soft job, saves them, keeps them out of harm's way, nature. Washing child, washing corpse, dignum, children's hands always round them, Coconut skulls, monkeys, not even closed at first, sour milk in their swaddles and tainted curds. Oughtn't to have given that child an empty teat to suck. Fill it up with wind. Mrs. Beaufoy, Purefoy, must call to the hospital. Wonder is Nurse Callum there still. She used to look over some nights when Molly was in the coffee palace. That young doctor, O'Hare, I noticed her brushing his coat. And Mrs. Breen, and Mrs. Dignam once like that too, marriageable. Worst of all at night, Mrs. Dugan told me in the city arms, husband rolling and drunk, stink of pub off him like a polecat. Have that in your nose in the dark, whiff of stale booze. Then ask in the morning, was I drunk last night? 
Bad policy, however, to fault the husband. Chickens come home to roost. They stick by one another like glue. Maybe the women's fault also. That's where Molly can knock spots off them. It is the blood of the South. Moorish. Also the form, the figure. Hands felt for the opulent. Just compare, for instance, those others. Wife locked up at home. Skeleton in the cupboard. Allow me to introduce my... Then they trot you out some kind of a nondescript, wouldn't call, wouldn't know what to call her. Always see a fellow's weak point in his wife. Still there's destiny in it, falling in love. Have their own secrets between them. Chaps that would go to the dogs if some woman didn't take them in hand. Then little cheats of girls, height of a chilling in coppers with little hubbies. As God made them, he matched them. Sometimes children turn out well enough. Twice not makes one. Or old rich chap of seventy and blushing bride, marry in May and repent in December. This wet is very unpleasant. Stuck. Well, the foreskin is not back. Better detach. Ow! Other hand a six-footer with a wifey up to his watch-pocket, long and the short of it, big he and little she, very strange about my watch. Wrist-watches are always going wrong. Wonder is there any magnetic influence between the person, because that was about the time he, <clears throat> yes, I suppose at once, cats away the mice will play. I remember looking in Pill Lane. Also, that now is magnetism. Back of everything magnetism. Earth, for instance, pulling this and being pulled, that causes movement. And time? Well, that's the time the movement takes. Then if one thing stopped, the whole gazapo would stop bit by bit, because it's arranged. Magnetic needle tells you what's going on in the sun, the stars, little piece of steel iron. When you hold out the fork, come, come, tip, woman and man, that is, fork and steel, molly, he, dress up and look and suggest and let you see and see more and defy you if you're a man to see that and like a sneeze coming legs look look and if you have any guts in you tip have to let fly and that's the end of chapter 13 part 3